After 18 years in use, one injects a sample into the GC and lo and behold, you discover that the oven in this GC no longer heats. This video deals with that repair. As with any repair of electrically powered equipment, please follow safe and prudent protocols. I never work on the innards of a GC without the first step being unplug the electrical power cord of that GC. And also, you may have to, in a safe manner and procedure, stop and disconnect the flows of the gases to the GC. Also in this video, we show a solution to keeping the room comfortable for human beings by using a hot oven exhaust deflection and removal system. Yes, an oven exhaust deflector is available from Agilent, however, one can modify a commercially available 6-inch elbow and achieve the same effect, and the cost of a 6-inch elbow is roughly only 10 bucks in the U.S. In any exhaust venting scheme, it is highly advisable not to generate any additional stress on the oven flapper door assembly. I use the term for this desired design as open split. However you describe the design, remember, no additional stress in the form of continual suction on the oven flappers and thereby on the oven flapper motor. Times and descriptions for the various segments of this video are in the YouTube Show More box. This is a repair on a Hewlett Packard, now Agilent, 6893 GC. And the symptom is the oven temperature doesn't heat. So, Let's start fixing the problem. So far, we've turned off the heaters for everything else, uh, cut the flows going to the GCs after everything's cooled down to room temperature, and now we have to start disconnecting the GC from some of the HVAC system exhaust. One of the things we had done was we made a custom deflector out of a, a six inch uh, ductwork here adapter and that makes its way into the return portion of the HVAC system and we have to disconnect that, take off the insulation, disconnect it. So that is step one. In order to minimize misunderstandings, let me make this disclaimer of liability. Uh, this video is for educational purposes only. This video is an account of the actions and repairs performed, and it may therefore appear incomplete to some. My apologies, but the intent is to avoid an excessively long video while still providing pertinent information. When plugged in, gas chromatographs have lethal voltages inside. Therefore, always follow safe and prudent practices when working on, maintaining, or repairing any instrumentation or equipment, including gas chromatographs. When servicing information, instrumentation when servicing when servicing instrumentation or equipment you are assuming the role of a knowledgeable qualified service individual so when in doubt call a service engineer always unplug the power to the gas chromatograph before removing any panels or exposing any electrical contacts or circuits this video is not meant to grant, issue, or imply any license, warranty, either express or implied, nor guarantee any actions or consequences performed by any individual or individuals or group or groups as a result of viewing this video. This video does not indemnify any individual, individuals, organization, or group. 
any action, actions, results, or consequences that you perform after viewing or as a result of this video are entirely your own responsibility. I have no control over your action. All right, inexpensive box cutters used to slice the fiberglass insulation. Six inch elbow, six inch to four inch adapter, and then you run four inch tubing. It's an inexpensive setup. I call it tubing. If you were going to go to Lowe's or Home Depot, you would call it metal ductwork. By feeling in here, I can feel a nut. So that's the, uh, the sheet metal screw cap. So I'm going to slice an annular ring off of this. Okay, so I have, a, I have a portion off of here. The reason I'm going through this hassle is I have to disconnect, physically disconnect the GC from the rest of the building in order to uh, get to the backside and the innards of the GC. So, what we're going to do is uh, remove these sheet metal screws here that uh, connect the duct, the four inch ductwork to its adapter uh, and then hopefully we can pull the adapter away from the stuff that's mounted to the wall and then take off see our custom deflector it was inexpensive um, off of the back of the GC after we start capping off the uh, gas three screws connecting elbow to ductwork have been removed let's see if we can move this apart taking this stuff off and hopefully be able to get to the uh, back end, cap off some gas flows and uh, see what's going on. Adapter and elbow are off and next we will reposition the GC to work on the back. But before doing that, I want to remove and cap these gases to the FID right. um, and uh, of course unplug the power. So what we have to do is take the back panel off of here and as usual Hewlett Packard, so these are T20. So this is the back end of a GC with the back panel removed and let's see if I can get in close and so the first thing we just have to check are there are four, two fuses here two fuses there remember power unplugged all right this is the back and these two are the heater coil leads, and it's even, let's see if I can get in there. Well, on this printed circuit board, it's labeled oven. Uh, there's also one that's labeled transformer, line voltage configuration, and oven fan. So we're going to un, we're going to disconnect the oven leads and measure the resistance. Okay, tested the leads. For the heater, nine volt, uh, nine ohms. That's okay. 
check the these two fuses, okay, but then check where these two ceramic fuses are. One has no resistance, the other has infinite. So, blown fuse. Let's see if that solves the problem. I'm replacing the, the ceramic fuses on the left with uh, 20 amp fuses on the right. Um, using a ohm meter, this guy has uh, infinite resistance. This one's okay, and these two are the replacements. Uh, Agilent service manual recommends replacing them in pairs. So let's see what happens. And see, this is the uh, replacement. Before I reattach the back panel, let me go over uh, the back panel with its uh, deflector. All right, so this is your, your typical back panel of a GC, right? and the air going into the oven goes here, and the air coming out is here, right? and then this is our, now uh, let's see, okay, so this is our typical um, deflector. It's a six inch heat, uh, ductwork elbow that uh, you just put in the position for a 90 degree deflection and uh, cut and then uh, we have a rivet here. This kind of bends around. Uh, that noise there is for the uh, clean air. I'm going to put some rivets here, and a couple of screws here. So uh, there's the back side. There's the side view of it. It's uh, uh, less than ten bucks from uh, someplace like Home Depot or Lowe's, certainly less than 20, and then you can uh, modify it and uh, attach it. And then uh, this is the uh, six inch to four inch adapter, uh, also commonly available, it even says six by four. All right, and then uh, this is a Four inch, uh, 45 degree elbow, commonly available, um, and so you'll you'll see this as we once we get it hooked up again to the HVAC system. This is the back of the GC, and we're going to put the rear panel on. Remember, it's power unplugged. All right, and there are five screws that hold this to the chassis. Slide this. Here. Okay. There. Okay. And so then we have four more screws that um, we need to affix. The five screws are located one, two, three, Four, five. And let's test to see that it works. All right, so we'll enter 33. See if it heats up. Heats up. I don't have any helium flow through the column, so I don't want to get too hot. We'll enter 22. See if it cools down.
about the, the, the room's about 25 C, so they, they can't get much colder than that. Uh, here we have our deflector hooked up to uh, the adapter, 6 to 4, to the elbow, going into the, the 4 inch duct work. I don't really like this setup. Uh, I'm going to change this to an open split uh, by making, by adding a 4 inch to 6 inch adapter and having an air gap. Um, I don't like to have the uh, suction pressure on a oven flap doors. This is the existing oven hot air deflector exhaust partially disassembled and with a, with a gap here. Um, originally the piece on the left was firmly secured to the piece on the right. So now we're going to uh, change it and uh, make it into a more suitable open split. This is the first rough-in placement of the adapters. So we have our 6-inch elbow, a 6-inch to 4-inch reducer, a 4-inch flexible elbow, the original piping, and let's move it around to this view here. And what's going to happen is we're going to install this here. So this will be the open split. And we need to cut this tubing to the appropriate length. And so what we're going to do is we're going to shorten this ductwork and cut it right about there. That's our gap. This is the preliminary installation. I'm going to use sheet metal screws uh, and make the joints nice and secure. But you can see right here, we're going to have a nice open split. So we won't have any suction pressure on the oven flapper doors. And that's the uh, completed construction assembly. All that's left is giving it a couple of coats of uh, white enamel paint. Um, anyway, so we have our open split arrangement uh, so that we don't have any suction pressure on the uh, oven flapper doors.